Hey, and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, we are working uh, with pre-calculus this time, and uh, again, we are taking uh, uh, our kind of flow of things from the pre-calculus book by Domena Waits Foley Kennedy, uh, fourth or fifth edition, depending on which copy of the book uh, you have. Uh, pretty similar stuff. Uh, we are working on solving polynomials of higher degree again. And again, the idea here is, uh, this is just like what we did in section 2.4. Really, the only difference is uh, that some of our equations will not have all real solutions. They may have imaginary or complex solutions as well. Okay, and we're really going to look at um, two different things. Uh, one is solving uh, using division, and that's what we've already done. Uh, again, the idea is we'll have complex zeros. And then the other is writing a polynomial from given zeros. We've done both of these things already, but again, the only new thing uh, going on is that, that we could have complex zeros. Okay? Um, so we're going to start off uh, doing basically just what we've already done. Okay? And so we're going to solve uh, y equals x cubed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can read the equation there. And again, we're going to start off by either uh, looking at a table or a graph. So this is x cubed minus 10x squared. So let's see what we have here. And that is the one that's highlighted here. I have the other equation we're going to solve on the, uh, in there also. Okay. And uh, this is kind of a weird graph. Now, uh, probably worth noting, I'm, I'm going to zoom standard uh, just so you see. But notice it's only crossing the x-axis. I only see it crossing the x-axis in one spot. And so, and it looks like it's at x equals 3. Uh, let me clear that ink. Uh, and so, let me go back to the normal screen. Looks like it's crossing at x equals 3. And again, all I'm seeing is that, now I can confirm that a little bit. Let me uh, pop back over here to the calculator for a second. Okay, and uh, I am seeing, again, x, x equals 3 looks like uh, the, the, the x value of interest here. Okay. All right, so we're just going to solve it just like we have been. Uh, so again, that was 3, 0, it was 2 something, and, and again, I'd, I'd want to see that value if you were making note of that. Okay. All right, so again, x equals 3 comes from the factor x minus 3 when it equals 0. And then again, if I'm dividing by x minus 3 with synthetic division, then 3 itself is going to go in the box. So the 0 itself goes in the box. Okay, coefficients of the dividend. Okay, and so bring down, and after this, it's multiply and add. So, 7, I got 21. And it looks like that worked. And by worked, I mean the denominator, or I'm sorry, the remainder is 0. I needed that to happen. Okay, and what I'm left with is x squared minus 7x plus 23, and I would like that also to equal 0. Factors of 23, well, 23 is prime, so 1 and 23, there's no way I'm going to get that to add up to negative 7. So instead of doing uh, factoring, I guess we're going to do some quadratic here. And again, there's nothing new about what we're doing so far. Okay, so this is now 49 minus, I think that's 92. Yep, 2. Uh, okay, so square root, uh, I'm sorry, 49 minus 92, that would be 43, negative 43. Also known as 7 plus or minus i times the square root of 43 over 2. Okay, and again, this is still x equals. And since this is imaginary or complex, I should say. Okay, and remember there was also one other solution, and that was x equals 3 that we uh, got from the box. Okay, so here, here's the end result of this. The only thing new about this is there was an i in our answer. That, that's, you know, in, as part of our solutions. That's the only thing new about this, okay? So you take the square root of a negative, the square root of the negative part is the i, and uh, that's it. Now, uh, again, if, if 43 uh, would have had, you know, other factors, then, you know, maybe we would be doing, you know, something, you know, two times what and breaking down that square root, okay? All right, that's one example. We're going to do another example exactly like it, only, uh, not like it at all. 
<laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right, so let me uh, turn that one off. And again, all I'm doing is pushing the enter key uh, on the equal sign, and that turns them off and on. Okay. And so this is supposed to be a fourth degree. And that's all I get. Uh, I'm going to go back to the screen I had. Uh, sorry, I need to zoom. I'm going to zoom memory, zoom previous, because I actually had worked up a screen that was a little better for showing me what's going on here. Okay, and uh, just for those of you following along at home, uh, I actually went down to a negative 60 in the y direction. And you can get a feel for wh what number would be appropriate just by looking at the table of values. Now, this is a fourth degree. Now, please note that this graph is not symmetric. Notice how it kind of goes a little wider and before it curves here. So, so this is fourth degree. It's not, not second degree, even though it looks very parabola-like. Okay? Um, and then the other issue is I really don't see any nice numbers where this is crossing. And uh, we can verify that in the table. So I definitely crossed over 0 going from negative 18 to 100, and I crossed over 0 going from negative 10 to 52, but it would have been between the 2 and the 3. It would have been between the negative 3 and the negative 2, and that's not, that's not nice. Okay, so let me pop back over here, and let me give you the other piece of information that I did not give you. I was supposed to give you that 1 plus 3 is a 0. Okay? And, and this is how some of the, the problems are going to be. They're going to give you one of the zeros, and then you start with that, and then go from there. Okay, so 1 plus 3i goes in the box. Okay, so now I'm going to do synthetic, yep, you, you saw it, there it is. We're going to do synthetic division with 1 plus 3i in the box. And, th and this is going to be, yeah, not so fun. Sorry. All right, so let's bring down the 1. 1 times 1 plus 3i is 1 plus 3i. Now, please remember that you only add real parts to real parts and imaginary parts to imaginary parts. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. The plus 3i comes along for the ride. So negative 1 plus 3i times 1 plus 3i. Well. As you know, uh, I, I technically, I would really have to FOIL this or distribute this, depending on how you want to say it. Okay. What I'm going to do is pop over and uh, use the calculator. Okay. So it was, I believe it was 1 plus 3i. Oh, that's not 2. Sorry. 1 plus 3i times, I believe it was negative 1 plus 3i. I, negative 10. Now let me just double check. I typed that in. 1 plus 3i, negative 1 plus 3i. Yep. And then I got negative 10 for that. 5 plus negative 10 is negative 5. Now I can distribute negative 5 across 1 plus 3i. That's not a big deal. Uh, negative 5 minus 15i. Okay, please note that uh, I'm getting a little off here, so... I should have given myself a little more room. So this is going to be 5 minus 15i. So 5 minus 15i. Times 1 plus 5i. 80 plus 10i. Uh-oh. Let me double check that I did this right. 5 minus 15i, 1 plus 3i. Oh, there it is. 1 plus 3i, I typoed. Sorry about that. There we go, 50. How did I know that wasn't working? Because I wasn't going to get 0 as a, as a remainder. Cool. All right, now here, here is a little tidbit of knowledge that is hugely important here. If the, the coefficients of our original problem are all real numbers, there are, there's no i's in, in the coefficients in the numbers part of these. If that's true, then complex zeros come in conjugates. So automatically that means if 1 plus 3i is a 0, then automatically 1 minus 3i 
is a zero also. So if they tell me one zero and it's complex, then automatically I know a second zero. So automatically I'm going to use one minus three i here. Okay, going to do it again. So one, one times one minus three three i. Well, this is pretty cool. Negative one plus one is zero. Positive three i and negative. Th this is all zero. And zero times that is, you guessed it, zero. So negative five. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 times a negative 3i is plus 15i. And that adds up to 0 also. Okay. So what I'm left with is x squared minus 5 equals 0. And again, if you want to use a uh, quadratic formula for this, you can, but it's kind of overkill. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. And again, I can do this just because there's no b term. Okay. And then the square root of x squared equals the square root of 5. So that's absolute value of x equals the square root of 5. So x equals positive or negative square root of 5. Okay? So there were four solutions to this, which is what we expect for a fourth degree. And, the, and again, the idea is you get one of them. You're told one of them in this case because there wasn't anything I could get from the graph. So I, they had to give me something. Uh, the, you know, there was a two point something in there and a negative two point something in there, but I don't, that, I, it's hard to work with that when you're doing uh, uh, synthetic division. All right, next up, if I tell you, uh, we're going to write a polynomial from given zero. So if I tell you x equals three is a zero, and if I tell you x equals uh, one plus three uh, i is a zero, okay, I want to write a polynomial, okay, so write a polynomial with real coefficients in a standard form. Okay? This is the goal. This is what the instructions say. Okay? And I give you two zeros. Okay? So the factor that 3 comes from is x minus 3. Remember the format is always for the factor is always x minus whatever the zero is. Okay, so x equals 3 was a 0. x equals 1 plus 3i is a 0. So x minus 1 plus 3i. I know you're going to hate that. Sorry. And then the other issue is, remember, if, it ha if it's going to have real coefficients, then zeros have to come in conjugates. So they wouldn't necessarily tell you both. That you would just have to know that 1 minus 3i is also a 0. Okay? And so we're supposed to write the equation for this. Uh, in, now, this would be standard form. I'm sorry. This would be factored form. And then what I'm supposed to do is put this in standard form. Okay? So as you already know, this is not going to be a lot of fun. Okay? Okay. My recommendation is deal with all of the complex stuff first. Okay, and I need to eliminate some of these parentheses. So I'm going to distribute that minus and the other minus. Okay, so I'm going to distribute all of this stuff. Okay, so I, I'm going to bring the x minus 3 along because when I get done multiplying this trinomial times this trinomial, I can't FOIL these because it's not, a, it's not binomial. It has three terms. When I get done with this, all of the i stuff should cancel out. Now, as you already know, I like to stack my terms so that like terms kind of match up automatically. So x times x is x squared, x times negative 1, and then x times 3i. So this is 3i x. Now, this isn't going to be as automatic in terms of things lining up as when we're just dealing with x's and stuff. Okay, so you, gotta, you have to pay attention. Okay. Negative 1 times x. Well, that's another negative x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1, and that doesn't line up with anything here, so I'm going to do a plus 1 kind of tacked on the end. Okay, So that's these two. And then negative 1 times 3i. Well, that's negative 3i, and that does not match this, so I'm going to do a negative 3i on the end. Okay, One more set of these. Negative 3i times x. So that should be negative 3i x. 
negative 3i times negative 1 should be plus 3i. Again, I'm matching up terms as I go along. And negative 3i times positive 3i is negative 9i squared. Now, you need to be asking yourself, why did I put that under the 1? There we go. Okay, so let me kind of pick up where we left off. So y equals x minus 3 times x squared minus 2x. Those add up to 0. Those add up to 0. Now, just a reminder that i squared equals negative 1. Negative 9 times negative 1 was actually a positive 9. So this is plus 10. Okay, we're getting close. We're almost there. I'm, I'm kind of excited. Uh, we do have a little bit more multiplication to go here. So y equals, okay, so I'm going to do x times, so we got x cubed, do x squared, 10x, negative 3 times, so minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 30. Okay, and again, I need to combine those, and I'm almost there, I'm quite excited. Now, I didn't say anything about a y-intercept, so there is a possibility that there could be an a out in front of all of this and that kind of thing. Uh, generally, that just is like one little add-on on the end if, if we need to. All right, so th this is done. Uh, this is really the, the new stuff in this section, uh, in section 2.6. And again, none of it technically is new. It's just with the complex numbers, there is an added level of bleh. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that. Thank you for watching. See you in class.